Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. As we take a look at my ABRSM Grade 6 Music Theory lessons available on my Patreon channel, I now turn my attention to question 1B, exercise 1. And in this particular question, we are required to compose a bass line to a given melody and also to give chords to provide a figured bass to show the harmonies that our bass line is implying. In this particular exercise, we have an extract from a violin sonata by the Baroque composer Fontana. Here we are in B flat major. And of course, we still need to observe all of the rules of four part harmony, for example, don't double the third in a major chord. Our leading note must rise to the tonic if written in the bass. That will be something we need to look out for, amongst many other of the rules of harmony that our composition will imply. The full lesson can be found on my Patreon channel. If you visit patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill, you can find the full lesson there and you can find links to this lesson in the cards and in the description box below. After this short little video, you can see sample examples taken from this lesson showing you how I work through all of the procedures required to be understood as I work with you note by note, step by step, explaining everything that you need to know. Everything you need to know to fully understand the advanced level music theory can be found in my Harmony and Composition textbook and this book is available from Amazon. You can find links to this in the cards and in the description box below. Enjoy your studies. So if we're in B flat major, let's put all of our chord choices. We'll probably stick mainly to the primary triads, maybe a chord two or a chord six. We'll see what unfolds. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, we're in B flat major, B, C, D, E, F. Oh, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. We want chord seven, of course. So write our triads. And of course, it's B flats and E flats. Of your key signature will deal with that. So your key signature will deal with that. So let's at least find what sort of choices we're going to use first of all. So we can see that we've got a chord one here, B flat, D, F. That's definitely a chord one. I'm going to write the chords here. I know ordinarily you put them there, but we need this, this space leaving for the figured bass, don't we? So I'm just going to put my chord options here out of the way. So here we have an E flat and a G E flat. That's a passing note, just passing stepwise in between. That's a harmony note, that's a harmony note. And then filling in the gap in between by step is a passing note. That's not really part of the harmony. There's a new harmony. So we Now that is crying out for a passing note which is like we've had here. So we could have thought like dotted, crotchet, quaver. However, because the melody line has a dotted, crotchet, quaver, I don't want the, the we don't want a homophonic texture. The style of Baroque music is to have a sort of quite a polyphonic effect where we've got multiple voices we don't want solid blocks of sound we want an interweaving of different voices so I'm going to have crotchet 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 so that we've got some interplay of rhythm so whilst I'm still keeping this ascending kind of passage I've just changed the rhythm a little bit now here uh, 5b if we go to six, that's going to take us down to a G, which would be okay. Or we could go to one. I'm going to go to one, I think. Um, now let's just check that we've got everything that we, we need because still rules of harmony apply. So we need to make sure we've got no consecutive. So we've got a G in the bass which is the third of the chord. So we couldn't have, 
a G there, that's so they've sorted that appropriately. Now here we've got an F to an F. So we're not doubling any thirds. We have got an octave, so we need to make sure we don't get an octave after that, but we don't, we get a, a third, don't we? So that's okay. So we've avoided consecutive octaves. So that's a third AC and we've got the right notes. We've not, because that's a C, we couldn't have the C in the bass because that would double the third in the chord five, which wouldn't be allowed. It wouldn't flow very musically either. Now what I want to try and achieve here is if we've got a nice little scale passage ascending, it was nice to reflect that in contrary motion. Contrary motion has a very pleasing musical effect. And it also gets rid of all sorts of problems as well. So I think we'll aim for some contrary motion. Now, if we go for chord 2B, that will give us an A, an E, C, E, that E flat, of course. Now, that is um, quite an uninteresting bass line. Um, we've already had... Now, I've... I'm going to keep it to a minim here because there's some movement, there's like a dotted part here, but I think let's give the, let's at least, oh yes, this would work nicely. Let's have a little bit of imitation because here we've got F, F, E flat, D. So if we have F, F, E flat, so if we can have that as a passing note, that would take us to here. Let's see what chord that would give us. Now we have an E flat. So that would actually work really nicely as a chord too. So we've managed to imitate what happened here, here. We've got some nice contrary motion. We've got some imitation and using this passing note, that will take us exactly where we want to be, won't it? So that works super. So now we need to think about um, representing these chord choices as a figured bass. So 6-3 is a first inversion. If it's a root position, no numbers are necessary. A second inversion is a 6-3, but if we just write 6, that implies a 6-3. So that's doing the job. Mm -hmm. 